What is going on, Pokemon fans? Welcome back to JD's Nerdverse. Today, we are doing a playthrough of Pokemon Crystal with Azumarill. Azumarill is known as the Water Rabbit Pokemon. This is the optimized playthrough. Let's watch our first encounter with a Pidgey. We named our Pokemon Maribel. I'll go over a little bit later what that means and why I came up with that name. And if you watched my last video, you're probably going to know. But here we go. We're going to face our rival. Triple question mark is our rival's name. He comes out with Chikorita. It's the best possible Pokemon to put here. Um, but... We use Dizzy Punch, which I'll explain why Dizzy Punch is being used here in just a minute. But we knock out a rival, we level, level 6. We didn't fight any wild encounters other than that first one that kind of just showcased the Pokemon. So we beat a rival and we're going to move on to this route. We're going to go over our stats. 100 HP, 50 attack, 80 defense, 50 special attack, 80 special defense, and 50 speed. For a grand total of 410 base stat. We didn't modify our stats other than our IVs. And that's mainly because we also want to hidden power dark. And you'll see why we're doing that here in a little bit. But here's what we really did modify. So our level up moveset is Tackle, Defense Curl, Tail Whip, and Water Gun. That's what we usually start the game with. If, like last week we started with this. Um, and we get two other moves throughout the game that we that are relevant is Roll Out and Bubble Beam. Rain Dance and Double Edge are not going to be used. But what we have is in the bottom left corner we have Breeding Moves. In the bottom right corner we have Event Moves. So I looked at the Breeding Moves. We could pick one. So Amnesia was one I actually considered and did a playthrough of. Started it and realized it doesn't do what it does in Generation 1. So I fell on Belly Drum. Belly Drum, it cuts your half, your uh, your health in half. However, it ups your attack stat by six stages. So that is broken. That is amazing. And then we also got a physical move that we can start the game with. That's better than tackle. We could have gone with Hydro Pump, but we already get Surf. So I don't think we need two water moves. We need one. Dizzy Punch is a 70 base power move, 100% accurate. Can make the opposition uh, confused. It has like, I think there's a 30% chance of that. So we substitute Dizzy Punch in for tackle, and we I'll substitute Belly Drum in for Tail Whip. And that's the move we're gonna we're gonna start the game with. So we have tackle, defense girl, belly drum, and tail whip, and it uh, not tackle. I'm sorry, dizzy punch. And yeah, that's our move set. It's an amazing move set. It's gonna make it so we fly through this. Now, as you notice, we didn't go to Bell Sprout Tower in my optimized playthroughs. You do not have to go to Bell Sprout Tower unless I see fit. And I don't think this Pokemon needs to. We're at level eight. We've just fought the minimum battles up to this point. Well, not really minimum. I just fought all the uh, the uh, chance and or the. Uh, the trainers that have been available up to this point. So yeah, we're only at level we're at level nine. This is in the fast level up group. I don't know if I said this or not, but Meryl is the water rabbit Pokemon, so that's something else as well. And yeah, we're blitzing through this gym so far. We've knocked out uh, both the the bird keepers pretty handily. It's been nothing that's been like super crazy. And we're actually probably one of the lowest levels we've ever gone into the Faulkner battle with. So let's go ahead and look and see how this battle goes. And see if we have any success here. So Pidgey's going to come out, go for Dizzy Punch. R automatically puts the other Pokemon at disadvantage because of a 50-50 chance of them hitting themselves. It doesn't happen that way. We do get hit for 10 hit points. However, we do level up and we're on to the Pidgeotto. Pidgeotto gets confused and it attacks through the confusion. It seems to do that very much. Uh, I think I, I don't think it hits itself one time. Nope, it hits itself one time, knocks itself out. And we get the pretty easy win over Faulkner. Pretty easy, I should say. Um, and we've leveled up to level 11. We're pacing pretty well for this. We're on pace to have like our levels be pretty good without having to fight extra battles in Bellscroll Tower. But now on this wild and these uh, this route here, we're gonna go ahead and go over our TM moveset. It's gonna come up very slowly. We're gonna start out with Dynamic Punch. Not gonna use in this playthrough. Usually I do, but we're not going to. But it is available in case of emergencies. Uh, headbutt. It will replace Dizzy Punch. As cool as Dizzy Punch is with Confusion, it does have five less power points. And headbutt's better because it makes the opposition flinch. Um, rollout is a move we'll probably use just a little bit. Curse won't be used. Toxics, Rock Smash won't be. Hidden Power is Hidden Power Dark. Now, in my previous two playthroughs, I used Hidden Power Fire. And it was useful. It had definitely purpose. But I think Hidden Power Dark is better. R rather than relying on Hidden Power more, it's going to basically make one real hard battle obsolete. So we don't have to do it multiple times. We had to do that in both playthroughs. So this will make one fight obsolete, which is pretty much Morty. And it's there, but I think we're going to replace it pretty quick. Okay, Snore not going to use Blizzard uh, and Icy when we could have used, but we just have better options than both of them. And the other two options are way higher accuracy. So that's the route we're going to go with um, with Blizzard and Icy Wind. Rather than having Blizzard and Icy Wind, what's going to go from... Instead of having Icy Wind, let's go with you know Ice Punch. And instead of having Blizzard, we're going to go with Ice Beam. Okay, and, uh, Hyper Beam not going to use Protect, Rain Dance, Endure, Frustration... Iron Tail. None of those moves are going to get used with this Pokemon. Um, Return will be used. It'll be our primary physical move. 
and we need a primary physical move because if our whole strategy is going off of belly drum we got to have a good physical move and return will be our most powerful one that's the most consistent that we can use it'll be 102 base power whenever we get to fully max out friendship so that that's definitely going to work well with having four times uh attack stat mud slap could have used not going to use uh ice beam or i'm sorry ice punch 75 base power very good move for this pokemon great coverage Swagger, Sleep Talk, Swift, uh, Defense, Curl, Knocking, Use, Arrest will be used in one battle. And it's a strategy I thought of with this Pokemon. It works very well with Bell Belly Drum, and you'll see that later in the game against Red. But we will use it for like one of the first times ever uh, for a strategy. Attract, not going to use Surf. We'll definitely use Surf because it's 95 base power. We get that before the 4th gym. It's amazing. It's very powerful. Strength, Whirlpool, Waterfall. We could use those, but we're not going to. So, this Pokemon has... Very good type coverage. It mix that with the fact that its breeding move is 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 dang near like just amazing to have. Um, it's going to be very helpful. And with the strategy of having that, we're going to make the red battle uh, easier than we've had it. And we've actually had a, I think we actually did a first try victory last time. So yeah, it's it's very uh, bold endeavor. But we're going to go ahead and try to beat this game with all this stuff. So you have all the stats laid out. You have everything. Let me know what you think. What our end game strategy is going to be. I'm pretty sure you figured it out if you've ever watched any Pokemon game ever. But we're finishing up here in Union Cave. And Union Cave was important. And I wanted to face everything. Because there's a Fire Pokemon in here. Like we're facing the Volpix right now. We also have Rock Pokemon. Which you can pretty much one shot. So it's very important to get some extra levels in there. So we don't have to grind later. So now we're facing Bugsy. Bugsy is going to come out for the Metapod. We're going to go ahead and go for Belly Drum. It's going to cut our health in half like I said. So now we're slowed down a little bit because of that. But Dizzy Punch is a one shot. Kakuna comes out. Dizzy Punch is also a one-shot. I went for Dizzy Punch rather than Rollout because it's going to be... Dizzy Punch is 100% accurate, so I don't have to worry about it missing. Uh, we do hit the Scyther, and we do um, knock it out in two shots. Very easy win. Could have gone south right there if uh, speed could have been slower. I don't know. But we get a pretty easy, convincing win over, over uh, Bugsy. And now we're going to leave here and go right into our battle against our rival. Our rival is going to come out with a Haunter. We have some good move coverage. So Haunter should not be too big of a problem. We're going to go roll out, and it's a two-shot. Very good. Our roll is going to persist and gain some power, and it's a two-shot on the Bayleaf. Now we have one Pokemon left, one shot on the Zubat. Very good. We beat our rival, and we're going to move on to the forest and grab ourselves a Headbutt. Now, like I said, we're going to go in the forest and grab Headbutt. Headbutt is a little bit better than um, Dizzy Punch. Dizzy Punch isn't horrible, but having Headbutt makes the opposition flinch. It's the same power, it's just, you know, we have the opportunity to make them flint. So, Goldenrod City is uh, littered with a bunch of errands you got to run. This one, you got to talk to this girl. And actually, silver and gold, you don't have to do that. But we move right on to Whitney's Gym. Whitney's going to come out with a normal type Pokemon, Clefairy. We're going to go for Belly Drum. And Double Slap doesn't do squat to us. Defense is very good with this Pokemon. We're going to start rolling out. And we're going to roll out one more time. And if we just hit Middle Take one time, it should be a knockout. Very good. Very powerful move. Makes her very obsolete. We're really going to learn Bubble Beam for only like 30 seconds. Because all we got to do is go fight the Kimono Girls and we get Surf. However, we did beat Whitney. A very easy win over Whitney. And we're going to progress on to face Sudo Wudu. Now, that's actually my next playthrough. And I had to ask some questions with everyone about Sudo Wudu. Woo! He's spinning and now he spins off. Woo! Sudo Wudu, if you look at his moveset, doesn't only have ways to optimize it. I don't have a moveset. I think I'm going to look at future movesets, see if there's anything that changes. Um, but that's pretty much it. Let me know what you think if you have any ideas about Sudo Wudu. So now we're facing this guy, and this guy just, he sucks. He has these plain old blue Gyarados rather than a red one. Like, seriously, there's a lake right there with a bunch of red Gyarados guy. Come on. But we beat this guy. He's not really important. I just want to make a joke about his, his lame old blue Gyarados. Get a shiny. Come on. But, we're, but the whole point of facing this guy is that means we're on our way to get Hidden Power. Hidden Power is Hidden Power Dark. I've gone, already gone over that. Which is going to make Morty's gym pretty easy. It's pretty much going to one-shot everything except the Gengar. But we go talk to the Komodo girls. We're going to face them. And I don't like to talk about these battles. But what we'll talk about is you're... I don't want to say you're halfway through the video. But you're getting pretty close. So I appreciate... Uh, if you made it this far, I'd really appreciate if you subscribe. And comment about anything. Statements, attitudes, beliefs, ideas you have for future videos. Ideas you have for optimizing this Pokemon or another Pokemon in the future. I also do what-if scenarios. So if you have a what if, like what if this Pokemon had this. I've done a couple on this channel. I did one with Zatu. It makes it significantly better if it starts with confusion. Um, so on and so forth. I would like to do a bunch more. But 
This is the part where I ask for the uh, ask for the business, so to speak. Please subscribe. I'm close to 500 subscribers. I'd like to get there, and your support means a lot to me. And commenting and everything helps you to algorithm. So like, comment, share to your friends, whatever the case may be. It is much appreciated. And we are wrapping up with the Jolteon. That's the final one we have to face. And now we're going to talk to this guy who's just watching girls dance for some reason. Kind of creepy if you ask me. Weird, weird, creepy, weird. That's my impression of someone uh, <laughs> that you all might guess. So we get the Surf uh, TM, or HM I should say. And we're going to face our third rival battle. Our third rival is going to come out with a Haunter. Now we're at the point where we have Hidden Power Dark, one shot on the Haunter, and this that's kind of a precursor to know how it's going to work on Morty. Surf is a one shot on the Magnemite, and we're going to do Hidden Power, or I'm sorry, Headbutt, and now its defense is like through the roof. We really should go for a special move, but Hidden Power Dark gets the knockout. Level, level 30, very good. Zubat comes out. Headbutt should be a, oh, well, Reflect is still on, so it wasn't a one shot, but now it's a two shot. We beat a rival, we fall right through the floor into Morty's lap, and we land right there, and now we're facing old Morty. <coughs> Morty. So Morty's gonna come out with a Ghastly, two Haunters, and a Gengar. We have Hidden Power Dark, this should be a Cakewalk. One shot on the Ghastly, very good. One shot on the Haunter, we also outspeed, which is very good. We also, do we outspeed the Gengar? We don't outspeed the Gengar, so... But he tries to put us to sleep, and all we gotta do is wake up. If we just wake up, we'll get this battle won. And this is kind of the downside to not being as fast as Gengar. Hidden Power Dark, he tries to put us to sleep again. We're just gonna go for Surf, just to be safe. Knock him out, and we have one more Haunter. Do we outspeed the Haunter? We do. So we get the knockout with Surf. We beat Morty in a pretty convincing, pretty easy win. And we're gonna move right on to, this is a big jump in time, but right on the Chucky Boy. Chucky Boy is going to come out with a Primeape and a Polyrath. I actually said a Mankey and a Primeape in the last video, and I went back listening to that. I'm like, damn, I'm dumb, but show must go on. We're going to use Belly Jump. It's going to maximize our attack stat, and Headbutt's going to one-shot the Primeape. Now, Polyrath is a little bulky, a little more difficult, but we get the one-shot on the, on the Polyrath as well. And we beat old Chucky Boy. It's a pretty easy win. And we're going to move right on from old Chucky Boy, and going to go right to Red Gyarados. Red Gyarados is not going to be hard, um, but he does spin in pretty cool. I don't know if you like that. I like that. So this is what I'm talking about. Whatever, uh, uh, fisherman, whatever. This is the one you need to go for, man. This this guy right here. Red Gyarados. You don't want a blue Gyarados like everyone else. Be unique. Be special. Here's Lance, and we're going to talk to him, and he's going to fly away, and we're going to face Price. Price is the Ice Gym Leader. Not really a weakness here. But we have a Headbutt, we'll take care of the Seal and the Dugong. We're going to go for Belly Drum, it's a little risky because we could potentially get hit by something, get frozen, and it could be bad, but it's going to make Headbutt one shot on the Seal, and it's going to be a one shot on the Dugong, I believe. Yep. And so now all we have is Palace Swine and Surf is super effective, and uh, it's, it's got two times weakness, so it knocks them out in one go. So Price, as usual, is a Cakewalk, and we're going to move right on to uh, give some medicine to Ampharos and talk to Sabrina. I said Sabrina, I meant Jasmine, so here's Ampharos, Wee! and then we give him the medicine, and he flashes us, a little rude, but okay, and now we're going to go ahead and face Jasmine, the gym leader. Jasmine come out still type, and I had Hidden Power Fire originally for this, but we don't need it. Um, Surf will do just, is just powerful enough to beat the Magnemite, uh, both of them, and then Steelix comes out, and it's, it's Steel Ground, so that's a one shot as well. And we get a very easy win over Jasmine. She usually can be a headache, but we get a very easy win. It wasn't a hard win in the previous two uh, playthroughs either. But now we're going to go face our fourth rival fight. He's At this point, he's a cakewalk. We have such move coverage with everything he has. Ice Punch will one-shot the Golbat. We don't really have any that one-shots the Meganium, but Ice Punch is a two-shot. Two we get a return knockout. Very good. Meganium comes out, like I said. Ice Punch will be a two-shot. It's very bulky, but we get the knockout. It went for Poison Powder, did nothing to us. Haunter, we don't have Hidden Power anymore, but if we just go for Surf, it should be a one-shot. Very good. We are 16 levels higher, so we should be knocking the crap out of this thing. And we don't one-shot the Sneasel. That's very concerning. I don't know if one of them set up a Reflect or not. That's a little concerning to me. But we're going to move right on from our rival and finish up the Rocket Plotline and go face Claire. Claire is the Dragon Trainer. Claire is going to come out with dra uh, Dragon Airs. Three of them. And Ice Punch will obliterate her. So there we go. And I didn't have the graphic up for Claire. Sorry about that. It is what it is. 
but Ice Punch, Knockout number three. And we're going to get the, the last Pokemon. The turn will be a three shot. We don't want it to heal, but it's probably going to heal regardless. But it is what it is. So healed. It ain't doing nothing to us. And we get the last knockout with the return. Very good. We beat Claire. Move on to our final rival battle of this game. Rival's going to come out with a... I think it's a Sneasel. Sneasel will be a one shot with return. We're just going to go for Belly Drum and just set up and just obliterate her team right now. Return. One shot on the Sneasel. And Magneton's going to come out. We're going to go for return on the Magneton. She's usually very bulky. I'm very surprised that's a one shot, honestly. Meganium. Is it also a one shot? It is a one shot. So we're obliterating her team. Now, there's one Pokemon she has that we will not be using return on. And that is the Haunter. Golbat, or I think Golbat just went down in one shot. Haunter goes down in one shot. Last Pokemon is a Kadabra. Could outspeed us, but it doesn't. We knock it out. Very good. We beat our rival and we move right on to the Elite Four. Now, the Elite Four, um, we are prepared. Belly Drum is definitely a move that is going to make us a good contender for a good time against the Elite Four. But here are the moves we are walking to the Elite Four with. We have the Nevermount Ice equipped. We also can have the Mystic Water and, and, the, um, and the Pink Bow. So that we can use Return if we have to. And a whole bunch of things we can do with this Pokemon. But our moves are Return, Ice Punch, Belly Drum, and Surf. Okay. Um, not a lot of move diversity there, because it's uh, like, you know, Ice Punch and Surf kind of attack the same thing. But Return can hit everything except Ghost type, and Belly Drum will make Return very powerful. So let's go and look at the stats of this Pokemon as well. And the stats are as follows Attack is 96, Defense is 125, Special Attack is 98, Special Defense is 131, and Speed is 95. Now, a lot of those stats are before any modification. When you open in open battle, your, your badges give you boosts. So we're at an hour and 8 minutes and 46 seconds. So with that being said, let's go ahead and face the first member of the Elite Four, which is Will. Will's going to come out with a Psychic type. He's got a bunch of, a little bit of diversity of like types, but really, um, Ice Punch will do a lot of things to most of his team. So Ice Punch knocks out the Zatu. Executor gets a two-shot. He did just go for Reflect, so physical moves are not as powerful as, they, as I would like them to be. So that's why we're going for Surf on the Jinx. So Reflect is up, that's why. So like our attack's cut in half. Slowbros comes out, Return is not doing much, but eventually um, eventually uh, the Reflect should fade, and I didn't realize that. It just said it on the screen. I just read it now as I'm doing this voiceover. But we should just suck with Return. Makes it a little bit more complicated on the Slowbro, but if Zatu comes out, it's going to be a one-shot. Very good, very very easy win, a little, a little longer than I anticipated just because that damn Reflect. But it is what it is. Now we're going to move right on to Koga. Koga is the Poison Trainer. So we're just going to go straight for Broke on this this one. Ariados is garbage, so we're going to come out and we're going to go for Belly Drum right away. Okay, cuts our health in half. However, Return should steamroll his entire team. As long as we go first, we should one-shot everything on this team. One-shot on the Venomoth. Uh, Fortress comes out. We're going to go for Surf. It's a one Oh, no, not a one-shot. But close to it, we get the two-shot. And then now we should use just tap, just uh, return on the next two Pokemon. Muck is a one shot. Is Crobat a one shot? It's a sometimes could be a very trolly Pokemon. It is a one shot. Very good. Koga ends up being a non factor. And so after, now that Koga is defeated, we're going to run on to Bruno. Bruno is we don't talk about Bruno very much, and that reference is very relevant with the name of the Pokemon Maribel. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and do Belly Drum again, and he's going to go dig a hole. And we're going to go ahead and go for Return. And Return should sweep his entire team. One shot, except for Onyx, we should just go for Surf with Onyx. One shot on the Hitmonchan. We're out speeding, which is great. Hitmonlee, one shot, very good. Machamp, I think we're going to outspeed the Machamp, and I think we're going to one shot. He's pretty bulky, okay. And so the last Pokemon, Onyx, don't even go for Return, just go for Ice Punch. It's a one shot, very frail Pokemon. For a Rock type, it's an extremely frail Pokemon. But we beat Bruno, and now we're going to go ahead and take on Karen. Karen is dark type. So we just got to get through the Umbreon. The Umbreon is the is the big uh, kicker with this poke with it with with the, with this. You can set up sand attack. It has pretty good bulk so it's hard to knock out one shot, but when you do belly drum and it misses sand attack, it makes life very easy for you. I should have just gone for return here and not risk it. Um, I should that's what I should have done. I made a mistake there. It is what it is. Um, this Pokémon you have to go for surf because you can't hit it with return. But every Pokemon after this should be a return because we have a, four, a six times boost to our attack stat. 
knock out. And then Hound Doom, last one, as long as we knock it out, we do. Very good. Got a little close there. It's the lowest health I've had in, in the Elite Four battles so far. But now we're going to move right on to the champion, which is Lance. And Lance going to come out. He's got flying type Pokemon, but he also claims to be a Dragon Master. He's only got three dragons, and they're all the same one. But Gyarados comes out. He does look like a dragon. I'll give him that. Return. It's going to be a three shot. Now, I could have gone for Belly Drum there, but it doesn't make sense. This, these Pokemon, Ice Punch is a one shot on all the Dragonites, the ones that are the most difficult ones to deal with. So I, that's why I didn't go for Belly Drum. It didn't make sense to do that just for Gyarados. Whereas everyone else can go down to one shot from like Ice Punch or Surf. So, so we're down to the Charizard. Charizard will be a one shot. And the last Pokemon we have to deal with is the Aerodactyl. Well, yeah, last Pokemon Aerodactyl. Surf will also one shot Aerodactyl. And with very well, very good. We beat Lance. I'm Batman. That's what he looks like. He looks like Jim Carrey as the Riddler in Batman Forever going, I'm Batman. <laughs> But, what that means is beating Lance, we are now the champion. So we're getting our time locked in. And once we get our time locked in, here we go. And an hour and 14 minutes, 0.9 seconds. So compare that with what we did on our last playthrough. Our last playthrough, we did 1 hour and 20 minutes and 59 seconds. So it's a 14 minute gain in time. And now, now that we're seeing this, um, I'm going to pause that for a second. Is uh, I always say, like, we're I'll, I'll see you guys in Kanto. So I, it's the game movie Encanto, I keep saying it, and the reason why Azumarill's name um, Maribel, well one Meryl, so Meryl Bell, and two, my daughter really likes her, and I like the movie too, it's a pretty fun movie. As uh, as the picture states, uh, I will see you all in Kanto, where we're going to finish up with Red. So see you guys in Kanto. And now that we're in Kanto, we're going to go and face... Uh, well, first off, we're not in Kanto. We actually had to take the boat ride to get to Kanto. Um, so we get on the ship, get off the ship. And we're actually rerouting a little bit in this game. I'm not going to go over the battles, because the battles are pretty obsolete. But we actually went in a different order. Usually I go with like Surge and then Sabrina. Just the order in the towns I go in. But we got to revisit some of these towns. So I thought I'd optimize it. And I think this actually worked out great, because I saved so much time compared to the other playthrough and how much faster I got through these things. So you'll see that. But what I want to talk about right now is what we're doing with these playthroughs. If, you have, if you've if you seen the last couple videos, you'll notice I'm playing through with the base form, then I'm playing through Fully Evolved, and then I'm optimizing to get the best possible playthrough. The whole point of my channel is I wanted to give every Pokemon a honest, good representation. If you watched all my Gen 1 videos, I went through and ordered the Pokédex. And the reason I went through an order is it, it provides... It doesn't give me an out to not play through with a Pokemon that I don't want to play through. If I play through an order, I, if I'm hell or high water, I gotta do it. So that's why I do that. It makes it so I know the order, you know the order. You know the next Pokemon I'm playing through as a Sudowoodoo. All you gotta do is go to any Pokemon site that tells you the Pokedex for Generation 2, and you're gonna know darn well I'm playing with Sudowoodoo. But I did have to ask a question. If you guys know anything about Sudowoodoo, what do you think I should do to optimize it? I'm looking at it, and I looked at like the initial playthrough, I got all my stuff laid out, but I don't know what I'm going to do with the optimized playthrough. Maybe I just don't. Maybe it's one bat, one video I, uh, you know, I allow curse, maybe. That might be the way around that. But I want to know what you guys think. Look at Sudowoo's stats. Go look at, you know, go look on the website. Go to Bobblepedia or Bobble Garden, whatever, and look and see what you can see with the Pokemon that I'm missing. But there's not a lot of options to optimize. It actually has a decent moveset. The problem is its stats are garbage. So there, the only thing I can think of is maybe if I can have something to boost its speed, maybe agility would actually make the Pokemon a lot better. But I, I don't really want to do that. I want to do something a little more unique. That's just a cheat way to make the Pokemon get rid of its only weakness, which is its speed. Um, but, uh, well, I, I mean, special's not good for that Pokemon either. But let me know what you think. I'm looking through and I'm looking at it and I'm just really racking my brain around how I'm going to make that Pokemon better. And I don't think there's really that many options around it, to be honest. But I want your input. What do you think it is? I want someone to think outside the box. Give me an answer. If you made it this far, that means you're invested in the outcome of this video. So I want you a little bit more invested in the outcome of the next video. So that I have um, anything else to do. Yeah, pretty much the only move it gets via breeding is from the Geodude line. And it gets like self-destruct, which is horrible. And it does get substitute. So maybe substitute. Maybe I can come up with... I don't usually use substitute strategies. So maybe that's the strategy I ought to go with. Maybe there's something in the future generations that I can use, possibly. So maybe I'll look into that. But let me know what you think uh, about this Pokemon. There is good things in the future generation now. I just clicked on it. Um, but let me know what you think. So 
We are right now obliterating Blaine. Blaine is being like seriously just abused by this Pokemon. <laughs> we one shot him across the board and we're beating Blaine. We're pacing very well. We have two more gym leaders. One is Janine. We decided to not go the path of Janine that we usually go, which is down the bike trail. Uh, I, I just saved her for last. If you, I didn't know this, but if you go to Blaine, she's literally like maybe like 15 seconds away from Blaine via surf. And by then, you can kind of see whether you need to face all the trainers in there. So I, I thought that'd be a great strategy. I'm probably going to do that strategy going forward when it comes to routing because she has all those trainers in there you got to talk to. Blaine has none. And if you're at a decent level where we have 10, um, 10 rare candies we have at the end of the game, then I can just give this 10 rare, or I'm, I know I'm in a good spot where if I get 10 rare candies, I have a good, at least a decent way to beat red. I think that's a better way to do it. So rerouting has been very helpful with this. So now we're taking on blue. We just knocked out his Pidgeotto. And now we're going to go for Ice Beam. Ice Beam's going to want, oh, nope, no, it's not, but it does freeze. So now we're just going to go for Belly Drum. Uh, the best idea right now is to set up Belly Drum. Get half our health taken away. He did restore his health, so it, that's dumb. But because Belly Drum is on the field and we used it six times multiplier to our or six times uh, state six stages up on our attack stat, so that should make the rest of these obsolete. Every one of these should be a one shot. The only thing I worry about is being outsped by the um, RK9. But we also have Surf, so RK9 should get one shot by Surf. So let's go ahead and go for that. We went for return to get the one shot. Extreme speed did not knock us out. We had a very low health at the end of this, but we did get the win. So that will, beating blue and beating all the gym leaders in, in Kanto uh, gets us to red. So red comes out with his team. Now, I have a specific strategy with this Pokemon. So I'm going to knock out Pikachu. I don't quite get there. He full restores. And I realize that I, I, I flawed the way I'm going to do this. So what we want to do is we don't want to try to knock out Pikachu because he'll use all of his full restores on Pikachu. And it draws it out, and we do have rest on our moveset, but I don't really want to be resting against anyone else right now. So like right now, we're going to go for rest, which is dumb. Venusaur is a grass type. It's going to knock us out immediately. We did equip a Mint Berry, which wakes you up from confusion. So that's the strategy here is, uh, is I want to be able to set up and then heal and then like obliterate whoever uh, obliterate Red's team. So instead, we need to be setting up Belly Drum on this Pokemon. It goes for Charm, it does cut our health in half, but we go for Rest right away, and that replenishes back full health, we heal with the Mint Berry, so we're awake, we just don't want to get paralyzed. Then we get paralyzed, so I thought maybe we can win this battle even if we're paralyzed. We still have a 6 times boosted uh, move, and maybe we can just one shot. Venusaur gets taken out in one shot as well, so now we're down to Espeon. Espeon should go down in one shot as well, but I thought it might be smart to just rest here. Espeon really doesn't have a great move against us, so we wake up after two turns, and we got rid of the Paralyze, but we didn't get rid of, we didn't, the health got, you know, dwindled back down because of Espeon. So we still have the Paralyze gone, but we still not enough to beat Snorlax. We cannot get Paralyzed. That's the big thing here. We have to, we have to set up on Pikachu, we have to restore our health, and we have to not get Paralyzed by Thunder. So we're going to rest. If we get hit, that's fine. Being damaged is not the problem. It's paralyzed, because I want to be able to go first, and that'll prevent us from taking more damage. Very good. And I can't, uh, I don't have the leftovers equipped. We equipped the berry to heal right, to uh, wake up right away, so I do not have leftovers. So Espeon, we're at, we're at a good amount of health for Espeon. Espeon gets one shot. This is what we wanted. Now we're at Snorlax. Snorlax, this will be a two shot. It is about 50% of the damage. Very good. That's a two shot. And now we're at Blastoise. So right now, we're in good shape. Blastoise doesn't have anything that can hurt us. So Return will be a two-shot. Very good. And now we're at the last Pokemon, unless we completely fall off the, a cliff, which we almost did because we got burned. I was like, oh no, I'm going to have to redo this again. So I thought about going for Surf, but no. Went for Return. Get the knockout. A very good knockout. A very good win. A great strategy. And so now let's compare that to our previous run. run. So our prediction video, I said I want to get this done between an hour and 30 and an hour and 40 minutes. And I got it done an hour and 39 minutes and 12 seconds. Okay, a little bit of RNG. Probably could have knocked maybe a couple minutes off of that. But regardless, it's still a very respectable and great time for a fully evolved Pokemon. It really doesn't have great attack stats. Great stats overall. 410 is not great. And but when you compare that to the previous playthrough, we saved ourselves almost 20 minutes. We, we improved almost 20 minutes over this Pokemon. And I believe 
a zoom uh um the previous playthrough that was a first try victory over red it might have been first or second try but it was a very quick first try victory and we are significantly level lower level now than we were then so keep that in mind as well but regardless of that we had a, an amazing run i'm very happy with this run i'm very happy with this video i'm happy to have played through with the zoom as many times as i did I'm also glad to be done with it and move on to the next pokemon like i said next week will be pseudo Wudu. i have a prediction video coming out on monday make sure you check that out let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time.